Welcome back to another video where I'll be taking you through step by step how to create a dot to dot book. Now these have massive untapped potential and I'll be showing you through the full process of research, cover, creation and uploading so you know exactly what to do to create this book. So the first thing I start off doing when creating any book is research and it's important you understand the demand and the potential and for this video we're just going to be focusing on free tools and that will involve the Amazon search bar and also DS Amazon quick view. So typing in dot to dot books we can see there's already 6,000 results which is still a lot of books to compete with. So we really need to be niching down and what we can start off by doing is just hovering over the search bar and then click like we want to type something in and Amazon will provide us with suggestions. So we can already get some ideas to niche down into and we've got adult large print, we've got ages 6 to 8, 8 to 12, 4 to 8. And this is important so that when you're creating any book that you know who your specific target audience is. And on top of that, what we can do is actually find a theme for our book. So let's take a scroll through just to find some ideas that we can use from the first page and scrolling down. So the first thing we can see here is maybe a dot to dot alphabet book, which would be targeted at the younger age group. Then we've got numbers one to 25. So that might be something you want to think about. On the right hand side, we've got a dot to dot ages eight to 12, and this has a hundred dot to dot pages. Pages. So that might be something you want to target at maybe a specific amount of dot to dot pages. That's another great way to niche down on the two books on the left hand side. They're both sea animal dot to dot books with nice attractive covers and really good BSRs. Then to the right hand side, we've got a connect the dots for kids ages three to five. And the author is running an ad on this book, but we can see it already has a good amount of reviews and a BSR of over 47,000. Now this is a book that has been released, you can see in the past 90 days, it is independently published, but we can see how well it's doing, the amount of reviews that it's, it's gained, and the BSR definitely shows that there's demand in this niche. Then another book that's been released, released in the last 90 days. So this book already has 33 reviews and it has a BSR of just over 30,000. And what's interesting is they've actually targeted adults and they've also gone with kind of a large print version. So these are a few ideas that you want to think about when doing your research. Now, if you also have access to BookBolt, then you can use the cloud tool as it does really simplify the research process. In this instance for dot to dot books, just make sure you choose the category as puzzle book. Then you can leave the BSR range and the, the price range and just make sure in the keyword you type in dot to dot and click search. And these are the books that showed up in the results. So what I specifically try to focus on is the books that have been released quite recently within the last month or the past 90 days. Then just keep an eye out for low BSRs as that will give us an indication that there is high demand for that particular book. So take your time to have a look through using the criteria that I've just talked to you about. So if we take a look at the book on the left hand side, then we can see that it's been released within the past month. It already has four reviews and they've targeted the ages of four to six. It's got a BSR of just over 200,000. Then to the right hand side, you've got a book that was only released on July the 16th. It already has one review and it has a BSR of just over 200,000. So next step, we need to understand what's actually included in a dot to dot book. And we can take a look at one of the popular dot to dot books to help us understand how they've used their images. So the main thing to understand is that they've made their images really simple for their specific target audience, which is four to eight year olds. They've not used every single line for their dot to dot pages. So this gives us an idea that if we're going to target the younger age range, that we don't have to use every single line for a dot, which should make our creation process much faster. Now that we've done the research, the next part will involve the cover and interior creation process, and this will all involve mid journey. So for my dot to dot book, I wanted to go with the jungle theme and for the front cover, I just wanted a lion on it. So I've really simplified my prompt and then I've chosen one that I think would be best for the front cover and I chose to upscale number one and you can see it right there. So that's what I'm going to use as my front cover. Then for the images, I really wanted to target kids. So I just made sure that cute jungle animals that were quite happy and that they didn't have a background. So that would make it very easy to place the dots around the animal. And you'll see for each animal I actually kept the prompt the same. I just interchanged the animal each time. So you can see a cute baby bear, then we've got a cute baby owl and so on. And if you are struggling with ideas, you can just simply type into Google or even chat GPT, just animals in the jungle or whatever your theme is. And one of the things you might notice with a lot of your images is that there are cut off. So for example, you can see the ears on the lion are cut off. Now what we can do is actually use the zoom out feature. So I've clicked on zoom out 1.5 X and similar to this bear, we can also see that there's cutoffs as well. So just by clicking the zoom out feature, 
then this is actually resize the image so that we can see it fully without any cutoffs. And we can see this with all the lion images. So all we need to do now is just upscale our chosen image and make sure that we're happy with everything. And next we wanna download the image. So all we need to do is just left click on the image and as soon as it loads, then we right click and we save image as whatever we want. And we now have it saved in our own files. And once all your images have been saved, the next step is a new step that I've actually been doing. And it's a website called TinEye, which is just a reverse image search engine. And it allows users to search the web for other instances of a specific image. And again, this is a great way of just keeping your account safe, whether you're using AI images or from websites such as Creative Fabrica, you want to make sure that the image has not been taken or used anywhere else. So in the instance of this Alliant coloring book page, we can see that it's got zero matches. Therefore, I know this image is unique and I can be confident using it in my dot to dot book. Tinai is also private and they don't save your search images. After this, we can upload our images to bigjpg.com. It is my favorite upscaler to use. There is a small price to using it, but it's very affordable. Otherwise, you can use the free upscaler called Upscale. So after all your images have been upscaled, we can now start the cover and interior creation process within BookBolt. And this is actually the cover that I created for the Dr. Dot book. And I actually think it looks quite attractive towards our age range. So we've also got images of the Dr. Dot pages on the back. Then as soon as we open up, we can see the cover page where I've got the title and subtitle and then just one of the images. For the page after that, you can usually use that as the copyright page or if you wanna leave a personal message. Then after that, we can see an example of the first dot to dot page where I've actually used all the outside lines and used dots on each page. Then the owl coloring page, I've actually, I've not used the top of the owl's head at all. I've just started the dots lower down. And then the third example with the cub, I've just gone around its legs and created the dots. So this is what I meant by you don't have to use the whole outline of the animal. You can just use certain parts, which does save a lot of time and makes it faster to do more images. So usually when I've created these books, I've had about 40 different images in there. So the process doesn't actually take too long, but I'll show you how I do it. So all we need to do is find the next blank page and upload one of our images. Then on the left hand side, you can see where we can upload our images from. So we just click that and then in the left hand top corner, the blue button to upload an image. However, mine are already there. So I'm just going to double click on the image that I want to use. Then it's just a case of resizing the image to the page. Every time you make a change on BookBot, make sure you click the save button. Now, if there is grayscale in the image, we can get rid of that. There's an adjust image option along the top and we just need to increase the contrast. And now you can see the difference and how it gets rid of those grayscale areas. I'm also noticing kind of a bit of a red undertone. So you can also reduce the, the saturation and that should get rid of that. So once you've made all those changes, just make sure that you click the save button at the top and our image is now ready to use. But what we can do is quickly copy and paste this onto the second page as we'll need to use the first page to erase certain parts of the image and then the second page to create the dots. So you can hit control C to copy and control V just to paste it on that second page. After this, we need to erase certain parts of the image to allow us to put the dots in. And I've decided to go all the way from its tail to one of its legs. So to start this process of erasing, we're gonna to need to go to the drawer right up at the top. And then we're gonna to need to change the color to white and then increase the size to 100. Then we can start at the tail and just make sure we click just to start erasing the areas that we want to get rid of and then just make sure we follow it round. It's quite an easy process, but you just wanna be careful when doing it. You can easily zoom in further, but there's also an undo button right at the top to the right of autosave if you do make any error. Then you just wanna keep on following the outline around up until you get to the part that you want the dots to stop, which is right about here. So now I'm happy with this first image. Just click save and then you can move on to the second image where we will be creating the dots. And to do this, all we need to do is click on the image and we will be provided with a few options to select along the top and directly above you'll find the option to connect the dots. So just click on that. And then to the right hand side, we're provided with further options to customize our dots. So as the image is going to be black and white, I always leave the dots color and font color black. And then the dot size I go with 10 and the font size I go with 20 and I just leave it as open sans and regular. 
Then it's important to remember the areas that you erased from the other image and just align your dots with the areas that you erased from the first image. So if you remember, we started at the tail, so you can just put a dot there and we went all the way around to the opposite foot. So just follow the outline of the image round. It's super easy to do, but just make sure that you keep following it around. If you do make any mistake, all you need to do is to hold the control and click on the dot in order to remove it. But I've managed to get it right all the way around. And once everything's completed, all you need to do is click the submit in the right hand bottom corner and you'll see the outline of all your dots. So this is why it's important that we do it on two separate pages, because now with the second page, all we need to do is copy and paste it now onto the first image. And as you can see, it's actually perfectly aligned onto the image of the cub. Then make sure that you save this page and then you go and delete the image, which is the coloring dots on the second page. And you can follow that exact same process for all your other images. Yes, it's going to take you a little bit of time, but again, there's great potential with this niche. A lot of these dot to dot pages I even use in my activity books, but the more you do it, the quicker that you will get at it. Now, as I explained before, some of these images that I also use them on the back cover. And if you want to do that, all you need to do is go to click on the image you want to use, then go to the top, which is file, and then you can export that as a PNG. You'll then need to upload it again and then resize it on the back cover. So once you are happy with everything, you can go to download at the top and make sure you download current project as a CMYK and it will download both your cover and your interior for you to upload to Amazon KDP. Now the final part is just the uploading process and I do have two really detailed videos that are going to help you with this. First, I recommend that you check out uploading your books to Amazon KDP. It's going to take you through the full process from your title to subtitle to backend keywords and pricing. Then another video I've got is about the backend keywords and this is really in depth which will show you how I choose my backend keywords. So thanks for watching another video. If you've got any comments then let me know in the comment section.